So hi, as introduced, my name is Kathy Brock, and the title of my presentation is Does Gestational Diabetes Mellitus Program Pancreatic Development and Function of the Offspring? So first, let's start out with some background information about gestational diabetes mellitus, the onset of type 2 diabetes, and the others of Langerhans, and then move into our experimental design, and then our results about histological uh, analysis and medical uh, analysis. And then I'll finish with our conclusions and future directions. So gestational diabetes mellitus is a type of group of intolerance that occurs during pregnancy. It's the leading complication of pregnancy affecting 3 to 20% of cases. And it's a major risk factor for the development of new onset type 2 diabetes. But the exact mechanism that links the two isn't well understood yet. Youth onset type 2 diabetes is a type of insulin resistance and lack of um, Lack of, relative lack of insulin that occurs, that's associated with type 2 diabetes occurring in youth. So this graph here, the white bar show the prevalence of diabetes in offspring from a non-diabetic mother. The black <coughs> bars show the prevalence of diabetes in offspring from a pre-diabetic mother. And the black bars show the prevalence of diabetes in offspring from a fully diabetic mother. So our control group is the white bars here. So when we look at the prevalence of diabetes in the offspring of a non-diabetic mother, See that it usually occurs in later adult years, but when we introduce a pre-diabetic mother or a fully diabetic mother, that trend seems to shift leftwards, and we see it occur in adolescent years. So to better understand this relationship between youth onset type 2 diabetes and a pre-diabetic mother or a fully diabetic mother, we decided to look at the pancreas. So the adults and minor heads are located in the pancreas, which is composed of multiple cells, but we're going to focus on alpha and beta cells. So alpha cells are responsible for glucagon storage and secretion, and glucagon is the hormone that increases blood glucose levels, so it's being under kind of fasting. And beta cells are responsible for insulin storage and secretion, and insulin is the hormone responsible for decreasing blood glucose levels, so it's being usually uh, it's prevalent right after meals. So the way that our patient was developed to compensate for these varying levels of glucose are either by increasing the insulin glucose production increasing the number of alpha or beta cells, or by changing the growth of the islets. But with these compensation mechanisms aren't enough, that's when we have the development of diseases like uh, new onset type 2 diabetes, which leads me to our hypothesis. So we hypothesize that offspring exposed to diabetes during pregnancy are predisposed uh, for the development of new onset type 2 diabetes as a consequence of impaired islet function and development. This is the experimental design we chose to attempt our hypothesis. So first we started off with two groups of mother rats, one on a low-fat diet as our control group, and another group on a high-fat sugar's diet to mimic ADM conditions. So often born from these two mother rats were either put on a low-fat diet or a high-fat sucrose diet. When these offspring have reached 15 weeks of age, they were sacrificed, uh, we isolated their pancreases and sectioned them on the slides for them to begin my analysis, and we also isolated blood samples from them. From the blood samples, we measured fasting blood glucose levels. So here's our offering from a lean mom on a low fat diet. This will be our control group, so this is considered a normal fasting blood glucose level. These are our offering from a lean mom on a high fat sucrose diet. So these offspring are able to respond to the high fat sucrose diet and they're bringing their blood glucose levels back to normal. And these are offspring, but that's not the case for offspring from a GM pregnancy. So offering from a GDM mom on a low fat diet show elevated blood glucose levels. And offspring from a GDM pregnancy on a high-fat sucrose diet showed further elevated fasting <coughs> glucose levels. So to better understand why offspring born from a GDM pregnancy have elevated blood glucose levels, we performed a series of experiments that includes uh, histology of the pancreas to determine islet numbers, aminophoresis staining to determine beta and alpha cell numbers, and also biochemical analysis and glucose-stimulated insulin solution to determine beta and alpha cell factors. This is, I'll start with our crystal violet stain. So here is an, um, a picture of the crystal violet stain. Here the darker crystal portion is the exocrine part, and this circular portion is the endocrine islet. So I counted the islet's per section area, and these are our results. So these are offspring from a lean mom on a low-fat diet and on a high-fat sucrose diet, and here's our offspring from a GDM mom on a low-fat and high-fat sucrose diet. You can see offspring born from a GDM mom show about twice as many islet's per section area compared to islet's compared to offspring born from a lean pregnancy. So to 
further investigate why offspring are developing more violence perception area when they're born for GDF pregnancy. We also did an fluorescence baby. Here are offspring from a lean mom on a low fat diet and on a high fat sucrose diet. And this is our offspring from a GDM mom on a low fat and high fat sucrose diet. So through our immunofluorescencing, we also saw that offspring born from a GDM pregnancy had larger eyelids. So not only do they have more eyelids perception area, they also show larger eyelids. Here the red color correlates to the amount of insulin in the beta cells. So the higher the intensity of the red color, the more insulin content in the beta cells. And these are the results we got. So there's nothing of significance in insulin content in any of the groups. For often from a weight mom on a low fat and high fat sucrose diet, and often from a GDM mom on a low fat and high fat sucrose diet. So the reason why offspring or GDM offspring are increasing their eyelid perception area and increasing their size of the eyelids doesn't seem to be related to insulin content. So we decided to look into insulin secretion. So here the LG bar stands for low glucose, so it's the insulin uh, secreted in response to low glucose or their basal level of insulin secretion. And then HG stands for insulin secreted in response to high glucose. And then the potassium chloride is the insulin secreted when we do de depolarize the membrane. So we'll start with our control group of often from a lean mom on a low fat diet. So here when they're stimulated with a high glucose, they are increasing their insulin response uh, significantly. And they're often born from a lean mom on a high fat sucrose diet, are increasing their insulin secreted in response to high glucose, but not nearly to the same degree as a control group. And they're often born from a GDM mom on a low fat diet, again, are increasing their insulin secreted in response to high glucose, but again, not nearly to the same degree as our control group. And then our offspring from a GDM pregnancy on a high fat sucrose diet show like a slight increase in insulin secreted in response to the high glucose stimulus. So the graph underneath it is just a full representation of the previous data. So here's our offspring from a lean mom on a low fat diet, which is our control group showing about a six fold increase in insulin secreted. And then our offspring from a lean mom on a high fat sucrose diet shows about half that fold increase in insulin secreted in response to high glucose. And then our offering from a GDM mom on a low fat diet showed a decreased insulin secretion in response to high glucose, although these are the groups of offspring that were never exposed to a high fat sucrose diet postnatally. And then our offering from a GDM mom on a high fat sucrose diet show a further decreased insulin secretion in response to high glucose, which suggests added effects of a GDM pregnancy and a high fat sucrose diet. So because our ex vivo results were promising, we also did an in vivo experiment. Here, uh, the zero time point correlates to the LG graph in the previous, so it's our like, basal level of insulin secretion. Then the rats were injected with the two grams of glucose per kilogram of weight, and then we measured their plasma insulin content at, at a 30 minute time point. So here's our offspring from a lean mom on a low fat diet and on a high fat sucrose diet, and our offspring from a GDM mom on a low fat and high fat sucrose diet. So often born from a GDM pregnancy, you can see have lower uh, plasma insulin content compared to often born from a lean pregnancy, which, is, which corresponds to our previous data, our ex vivo data. So we do think that uh, why often born from a GDM pregnancy are increasing their eyelid perception area and are increasing their eyelid size is due to a problem in insulin secretion. We also did glucagon aminofluorescent data. Here we're offering from a lean mom on a low fat diet and on a high fat sucrose diet, then offering from a GDM mom on a low fat and high fat sucrose diet. So through this aminofluorescent data, we did also see that the eyelids were bigger and offering born from a GDM pregnancy. And here the green color correlates to the glucagon content in the alpha cells, but we're still getting the numbers for this. So in our conclusions, we did see for our special violet staining data, we saw that there's twice as many eyelids per section area and offering born from a GDM pregnancy. From our um, immunofluorescent data, we think that insulin content seems to be independent of the prenatal uh, diet and postnatal diet. And through our ex vivo and in vivo glucose stimulated insulin secretion, we saw that insulin secretion was impaired in offspring born from a GDM pregnancy. So we think a combination of these effects are driving new onset type 2 diabetes. In the future, we hope to uh, mimic these results for glucagon or the insulin results for glucagon, so to do glucose stimulated glucagon secretion. I mean, for us, staining and gate cap phase three to quantify the activated uh, gate cap phase three levels to measure cell death and to also measure cell proliferation through TF67 and to do qPCR to see if the genes that are affected by GDM exposure are either functional or developmental. I'd like to 
and with a thank you to my lab for making sure I have a great summer and for Brent with all my questions and to all the funding that we get to make this summer possible and to Stephanie for listening to this presentation in 10 times. <laughs> Really kind of cool that you had more violence per area. I mean, not only did you see an increase in size, but more islands. Um, did you see any difference in, in, in size of the, the number of island cells? Like the beta cells in the alpha. Right. We do have numbers for that, but we haven't um, We have covered it. I just want to use the term pre-diabetic. I'm just wondering, can you define that term? I'm sort of unsure what you mean by pre-diabetic. Did I even say pre-diabetic? No, <laughs> you said it in the beginning, and I, I, I just. Okay. Yeah. So for like not at the totally